the prevention of RBS is with antenatal steroid prophylaxis and either beta or dexamethasone can be given to the mother, presenting with preterm labor or impending preterm delivery. It is one of the most important developments or advances in neonatal medicine. It was introduced uniformly from 1989 to 90 onwards, and this is one of the main uh, factors behind the Cochrane movement. Actually, the Cochrane logo is a meta-analysis of use of antenatal steroids, and there was a delay in introducing it, and that gave an impetus to the Cochrane movement. So, steroids used antenatally in the mother reduces the incidence as well as severity of respiratory distress syndrome, and it improves outcome with a 40% reduction in mortality. Mechanism of action is by releasing the surfactant, which is stored in the lamellar bodies, induction of the proteins and enzymes that are involved with surfactant synthesis, reduced vascular permeability by changing the membrane channels, it reduces the fetal lung fluid by opening epithelial sodium channels in the type 1 alveolar cells. So multiple mechanisms of action. The early mechanism of action is by acting on the release itself. So by 6 to 8 hours, it may act. The production of surfactant and the effect on RNA will be delayed by 24 to 48 hours. So the best effect is from 24 hours till 48 hours and the action may last till 7 days. The Cochrane review shows that doesn't reduce, it doesn't increase the risk to the mother of either death, chorionitis, or pupil sepsis. However, in the baby, it's associated with overall reduction in neonatal death, RDS, IVH, NEC, respiratory support, NACU admissions, and systemic infections in the first 48 hours of life. So there is no doubt that antenatal corticosteroids is very helpful. It's indicated in all the women at high risk of preterm delivery between 24 and 34 weeks of gestation. And for women at 34 to 36 weeks, this can be considered if there is imminent preterm delivery with no previous exposure to antenatal steroids. In term babies, sometimes we can consider using it when they are born by elective LSCS. However, it's not encouraged because there may be long-term effects of the steroid which are coming out in recent studies. In all women at higher risk of preterm delivery, you can consider starting a course even if only one dose is anticipated. As I said, the action can be as quick as six to eight hours. And because we cannot predict, it's better to give it for the benefit. And tocolytic drugs should be considered to gain time to administer where there is no contraindication. Betamethasone is a steroid of choice. However, dexamethasone can be used as well depending on the availability. And uh, both are comparable as far as the brain review and other meta-analyses are concerned. A course of two doses of 12 mg intramuscularly 24 hours apart for beta methasone and 6 mg intramuscularly every 12 hours for dexamethasone are considered. And the effect lasts for about a week, as I mentioned earlier. And routine repeat doses are not recommended. So it's very important to choose the first dose in the appropriate patient and give it at the right time. Don't give it with a weak indication because you're not allowed to repeat it. And when the actual delivery happens within a few weeks, uh, it may be difficult. Of course, if you have given the first dose below 28 weeks and the lady still goes on to deliver preterm more than 14 days after the first dose, you may consider a second course or a single dose at that stage. And this is endorsed by ACOG, RCOG and Australian bodies as well.